So that was the introduction. Let's go into an overview of four and three. Can I add something real quick about what you just said, though, Nate? Um, I was for waiting the, for you. I was on mute. I was talking. And I realized, oh, he's moving on. Um, I wanted to add that as a special education um, data coordinator, you're not necessarily responsible for two, three, and EOI one. That is what the SIS data coordinator, that's been their job all along. Um, they may need your assistance in EOI three because there are students um, with incidents that may need to be reported. And so they're going to coordinate with you to be sure that's all been um, added to the SIS for reporting purposes. Um, but how this fits in with you is there's going to be pressure on you guys that are um, managing the data and uploading that data into CalPETS for the students with disability because as you can see here, we're telling folks EOI4 has to be one of the first ones that you get done and finalized before you finish your other submissions. So that's the, the takeaway from this screen. We wanted you to know that there are four different EOI submissions happen simultaneously and the LEAs are trying to figure out what do they do first and second and some are doing it in parallel and working on all of them at once but we definitely need the EOI 4 submission to get approved before your data coordinators in the SIS can continue on and approving their submissions um, the other submissions so that's the essence and the key takeaway from this slide that's it thank you so let's uh, do just a short overview of end of year four and three before we go into detail. All right, the data collector for end of year four, um, and it's called the final phase of the case transition. However, that's not necessarily true because the transition probably is going to take a year, an additional year. This was the implementation year with all new functionality that I've seen in 10 years of working in CalPads. Um, something's implemented and then we refine it and so if you if you're in, uh, uh, find yourself new to CalPAS this year always expect change that's been the one constant um, and so uh, the the student with disability program and services record the SPED and the SSRV uh, must be submitted for end of year four in addition to that uh, the students post a secondary status for those who exited secondary education in the 2018-19 year um, and so in the right top right corner, you can see the different file types that are required at a minimum. And then below that are the staff that we imagine would be involved, right? And so of course the special education staff, your several directors, your uh, administrators, and then student system support staff. And that's because although uh, data specific to students with disabilities uh, programs and services comes from the SAD system, the rest of the student profile comes from the SIS. And so data collected for end of year three, and this is in totality for all students reported. Uh, the focus of end of year three is our incidents, um, and those incidents may be statutory offenses, the use of restraints and seclusions, um, the results of those incidents, and then, you know, typically these are going to primarily have uh, suspensions and expulsions, but not limited to that. Um, then also student absenteeism, cumulative enrollment, and the homeless record. And then on the top right corner, you can see all the file types related to ND for year three. Right. And these are at a minimum again. And then you have uh, pretty much a similar set of staff who should be involved with that submission. And so uh, you need specific roles. And from fall one, if you uh, reported data for fall one, you most likely have what you need to complete um, into year four. However, you may need a PSTS role that you can see that wasn't needed for fall one. And then uh, to see your students with disabilities reports at the LEA level, you're going to need a sync role, right? And so, um, you know, I saw a question that, what do I need from my SIS person? Well, I mean, this is kind of what you're going to make sure that you have access to the data that you need to be familiar with. And so since um, you're not submitting data from the SIS, but you have to review reports for students with disabilities, and perhaps look at those individual records, the sync and the EOY3 reports role may be needed. 
And then additionally, you may need to have the PSTS role assigned to your account. And then because uh, we would expect uh, you to be uh, the most knowledgeable person for students with disabilities as far as CalPATS is related, as far as CalPATS is related, um, perhaps you need to have the data collection certifier role, which you may not have had for fall one. And so at a minimum, and you know, any access that you need, you need to discuss with your LEA administrator. Most of you would probably associate that as your SIS person. And then documents you need to be familiar with, of course, is the CalPATS user manual. If you just Google CalPATS user manual, it comes right up. Then the CalPATS code set, the CFS, the file specifications, the error list, and the data guide can all be found at the CDE system documentation page. You actually have to put CalPAD system documentation if you're going to Google it. But once you have that page, you should bookmark it because all the official documentation is there, as well as the valid code combinations. And then there's a link from the system documentation page to flash communications. And so um, there's several different uh, documents that you may need to be familiar with. And this being your first year, that may be overwhelming. And so that's why we created this training to kind of condense the most important information for you. 